I was calling and asking someone what happened uh, significantly 50 years ago. I called Brother Tim Crawford, who was standing Brother Ed, and he said uh, that there was some unusual things going on. Now, one of those was that Franklin Roosevelt was a president. I don't know how many of you have been recall those days. And he said also it was the ending of the Depression. This country had been going through some uh, terrible times and uh, many people were having to stand in the bread line. And also about this time, Hitler was preparing for war in Europe. So 50 years ago today, there was a lot different events that were taking place. I thought about 50 years and golden anniversary and I, I thought of a uh, feast of Jubilee because that is a significant ceremony that went on in biblical times and it meant a lot to a lot of people. That word Jubilee means a joyful shout either by uh, a voice, uh, a several choir, or a blast of trumpets. And it started something significant in the, the life of a Israel. And there was really, there was four laws that were done. One was that the crops were rested. They could not plant anything in that 50th year. They couldn't work in the fields. I think of Brother Sister Ed, who have retired in, in one way. And uh, this 50th year of Jubilee was the time for the hunt, fish, and uh, look after the cattle, but they couldn't do anything with their crops. Another thing was, was the reversion of land property. It reverted back. And that was one of the reasons why, because wealth has a way of corrupting people do not like to turn loose, loose of wealth. But with this plan, at that 50th year, everything would revert back and it would give people a new opportunity. So uh, the Feast of Jubilee reminded me of this. And then it was a time of freedom of slave. If you had, uh, were a slave at that time, and uh, when that trumpet sounded, you were free. You did not have to remain with that master unless you chose to remain with that master. Then there was another word that I thought about in the 50th, and that was well, we get the word Pentecost from. It was on the 50th day. Sister Heads is a wonderfully blessed person because she was involved in the early Pentecostal revival that swept across the country. She knew God in the days of Amy Simple McPherson and uh, was a, a part of a great revival. And Pentecostalism today is sweeping the world. It used to be thought of as a group of people on the other sides of the track. But Pentecost is the fastest growing move of God in the world. It's not a denomination. It covers many different denominations. But it's a marvelous move God that is sweeping thousands and millions of people into a, a real born-again experience with the Lord. And with that is tremendous healings and, and the power of God. And then I thought of the word golden. This is a golden anniversary. It stands for preciousness, purity. And I would like to say that in my association, in my understanding and being who they is. There are certainly people that are precious. I had first met them in revival when I was in Fairfax, holding revival for Brother Kelly. And in that church, Brother Ed served as a deacon, and Sister Ed was a teacher and active. Their goal. And I tell you, there's a lot of things that people have today that sort of is, is just getting carried away, but you find people who are precious and pure 24 karat, faithful to God, their testimony will go long beyond them. 
and they have certainly come to the Outer Banks. They have been an integral part of the churches here. Wherever they have worshipped, they have put their heart in it. They've been faithful, and uh, I thank the Lord for the privilege to be able to just know Brother and Sister Head. And thank God that Brother Head has uh, served our church. Sister Head is a, is a wonderful teacher, and, and many of our class uh, people are here today. We just want to honor them. I want to thank them for cooperating with us today. Brother Gilbert Head, will thou continue to give your wife Catherine yourself to be her wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaken all others, keep the only unto her so long as you both shall live. I was asking Joel before we came, and I said, he said, Daddy, he said, are they going to repeat their vows? I said, yes. He said, that would be pretty hard for them to, to repeat what they said 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's only eight years old. And I said, well, all they'll have to say is I do. <laughs> he said, oh, that's not too long. <laughs> Sister Ed, without having this man to be thy wedded husband, continue to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony. Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaken all others, keep thee on him unto him so long as you both shall live? Would you repeat after me, Brother Gilbert Ed? I, Gilbert, take thee captain, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, and this day forward, for better for worse, for richer for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and cherish, till death us do part. Be after me, sister. I, Catherine, take thee, Gilbert, be my wedding husband. I have no hold from this day forward. For better for worse, for richer for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to death as to heart. Brother Kev, is there anything that you would like to give? Show your appreciation for this help me of yours and her faith was to you for all these years.
she don't know she wants to put up with him enough. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure that you remember all those duties that you were charged with at that first institution? <clears throat> well, I'm sure that I heard them. <laughs> I'm sure I knew what he said. In case you have forgotten, I would like to smell them out again. Uh oh, here we go. It is the duty of the husband to provide for the support of his wife, <clears throat> shelter her from danger, to cherish her for her manly and unchangeable affection. It being the command of God's word that husbands love their wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave his own life for her. I charge you to do that, Kimberly Head. <laughs> Catherine Head, it is the duty of the wife to love and obey her husband and to put on the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. <laughs> It's you. <laughs> Which is in God's sight an ornament of great price. His word commanding that wives be what? Subject unto their own husbands. Even as the church is subject unto Christ. I charge you both, it is a duty of you to delight each other in the society. To remember that an interest and reputation as an affection, they are to be henceforth one and undivided. These are the things that I think that you will use. <laughs> For as much as Gilmer and Catherine Head have come and reenacted these vows together, said it before you in holy wedlock, and witnessed the same before God in this company. I would ask you to cross your heart and raise your right hand. I charge you to continue on in this wonderful marriage that you all began 50 years ago. And what God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. You may kiss your wife. <laughs> It is a marriage supper of the Lamb. We've asked the Long Streets to come and stand. There's going to be a meeting in the air. You may be seated. Don't sit already.
Daddy is Papa to us because all the grandchildren have always called him Papa and you get in that habit yourself. And so Papa, tell us about your first date together. <laughs> She couldn't stay out late, you know. And as I was bringing her home, Catherine walked up the the sidewalk to the house. And so I uh, saw her, of course, you know. And then the following week, I gave her a call because I knew the phone number of the house where this other girl lives. So, and I spoke to her. And I asked her to go up. And she says, oh, no, says, uh, you're so-and-so's boyfriend. I said, no, not really. I said, we're just friends. And I said, uh, I was just bringing her home from up the country. And that's how we started out, just going out together. Is that all right? Yeah. Did he tell it right? Yeah. All except that. <laughs> I really had to hurry up and get dressed because the girl was coming home from work at any time she lived at my mother's house. And I was so afraid that she would come home and catch me with her boyfriend. <laughs> so I hurried up and got ready so I could take him out the minute he came. And my mother is a little Irish, she was a little Irish woman. And everything was funny to her. And I knew when I introduced uh, boy named Head to her. Uh, the name Head wasn't very familiar to us. The and stops. when I knew she was going to laugh, <laughs> and I was so worried about that, that I <laughs> Now, this is something for both of you. What was it like providing and raising your family? Yeah. <laughs> one, one thing is tell about our vacations. We had a, had a vacation here in front of the beach. I just can't We went out and Palmer rented a little boat. And I guess it would um, be a rowboat variety. Uh, and I'm... Yeah, I want to digress this little bit. We all used to sing in a group with a band, and nobody will believe that at my work. You just don't believe that I've been there sooner. And Mom and Daddy, we used to have parties all the time. Mom and Daddy were so good. They would let us have a party, and they would stay in the bed. And then they would Daddy would walk them through every night when it was time for people to go home. Yes. In his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have anything to say. I just a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about this. Mom and Daddy were up at the house from Virginia Beach now, and they went out on the boat with us, and we were fishing, and Daddy was threatening not to marry Mama, and Mama was threatening not to marry Dad. And so I was kind of surprised that they got together today. <laughs> All three of us are very proud of our parents. We could have asked for better people to raise values and We're very proud. Do you want to try? Yes. Thank <laughs> you.
we haven't got the cake yet. <laughs> but we know that Lord, the Lord is able to do a miracle. If your life is dull and all, you, all you've been enjoying in life is water, the Lord can give you something that will bring excitement and you can experience the real life and power of Jesus. And if you've never done that, I, I just before we say a word of prayer over the end and bless the food and fellowship, I'd like to give you an opportunity to just sort of raise your hand very quietly. We're not going to come to you, but if you would like to invite Jesus Christ to come to your heart and forgive you your sins and to make him Lord of your heart on this 50th wedding anniversary day, would you just lift your hand right now and say, Brother Dave, remember me. I'd like to do that.
Put your face in close. Get in behind. Put your face up close to the picture. There you go. Yeah, then I can get a closer view. Right there. Both did not go unnoticed. Different and we sure enjoy it. <laughs> 